was with uh, a member of the Austrian Youth Orchestra in Berlin in the Karian competition where several youth orchestras of Europe could take part and I heard the German, the Junge Deutsche Philharmonie, the German Youth Orchestra with Mahler One. And I was extremely impressed already. Not because only the big sound, other symphonies also have big sound, but what impressed me very much was the way Mahler treated the darkness actually, and the special uh, meaning, for example, in this third movement. It might have to do something with my own experience because um, I have lost my mother. Uh, she was the mother of nine kids and uh, I have lost it, uh, lost, lost her and she was, uh, I took part in a funeral of course and uh, the way this funeral was treated, it reminded me actually a little bit on this music and it might have been connected with that. I would say, I didn't understand that really, what, what made it, I learned that later on, but I already felt the, the world of, of Mahler, I, the, his way of expression, um, and go very deep uh, in the darkness, deeper than darker it, it can be, and more wide it can be than every other com composer I have experienced before. And everything packed is like, it was in that time for me like a modern film I see the first time. A program which I, that, uh, as a young kid, I could not understand, of course. Now I understand the story, hopefully. The symphony was still the, um, the, the Holy Grail in my life. Beethoven, the hero of course Mozart, Haydn, Beethoven, Schubert, Schumann, Brahms and Bruckner, they treated the symphony as a whole and was the, uh, the Kunst, the holy, the heilige Kunst, the holy art, so to say. And now a composer starts to write music which they hear in a solo orchestra. And we have to know that in times uh, and later on also, the musicians of the Vienna Philharmonic and the, on, this, on, on the whole orchestra, in the free time, many of them went to wonderful places, summer places, um, to play in a solo orchestra, where they played uh, Johann Strauss music, uh, transcriptions of uh, Tannhauser, for example, or all the marches and all the galops and polkas, waltzes, everything. And then I came back from holiday, playing again in the Hof Orchestra in Vienna Philharmonica, and suddenly experienced something. There is a composer who put everything in which they have played through all, through the the whole summertime. So you can imagine that the musicians at that time were probably thinking, oh, this is something cheap and trivial and it's not our holy art. No. I played uh, the Mahler's Symphony Number no. 6 under the direction of Leonard Bernstein. That was very impressive for me. I played Lauren Marcel, and by the way, also to mention Dora's, um, Lauren Marcel's love for, um, for uh, Mahler's music is really exceptional also. I played the Seventh Symphony under his pattern, and uh, I was also, uh, Claudio Sabato's love for Mahler's music was also for me quite impressive. Um, I had the possibility also to uh, organize 
the first concerts of the Gustav Mahler Youth Orchestra where I was assistant of uh, uh, Claudio Abado. So I had a lot of experience with Gustav Mahler's music which um, I would not like to miss. I'm a fan of chamber music. I love all this chamber music. I was grown up with chamber music, Haydn Quartet, Schubert and also all this, even the Bruckner Adagio is great music to listen to each other and to go into the deepness of the music. When Mahler asks a um, certain dynamic, a certain way of reading, um, you have to always to think, in my opinion, um, on chamber music. How much can you make an explosion? How far can you go? If everything is loud, then you, what is left? If, is, if everything is soft, what is left? So you have to point out the, the climaxes and that there's no misunderstanding. Climax for me doesn't mean loudness. Climaxes can also mean softest. And there are a lot of hundreds, tons of moments in Mahler's music where you have the climaxes in the, in the silence. Definitely, because Mahler was honest himself. He, was, he felt all those moments he felt he brought, brought, brought to, to, to the music. His desperation and his, his um, when the world was where he was in the, in the highness you know, and his experience as a child um, you will feel everywhere in the music as it is in the oboe or listen on the fourth movement of the, of the fourth um, uh, symphony or uh, the angels and Knaben Wunderhorn is the boy's uh, uh, element in it. So childhood and his disappointment of love, for example, his first loves and all the desperation and thinking about the sense of life, uh, the feeling in a time anyway, in the transition from the 19th to the 20th century, where um, Vienna played a very big role, uh, also political, uh, the feeling the world will be destroyed, the apocalyptic um, uh, uh, view of, uh, of the future, um, but also the feeling it to be in heaven, everything in the heart of, of Gustav Mahler, of this great human, I would say, uh, is, fun, is fantastic. But one, away, one time again, he was demanding so much, so he could be sometimes a little bit um, arrogant and nasty to other people. But what a thinker. I, my personal view, he loved humans very much, and he um, demanded from them a lot and he was the figure which um, with Anton Bruckner probably um, viewed the whole 20th century already. What we experience now in a time now 2010, 2011 next year, the both my years, isn't it like that with our nat natural problems with the environment? Isn't it all already something in the music? The apocalyptic things, I find it, that makes, makes it so modern. I use for Mahler the original, how he, how he heard his um, symphonies. That means that the second violin is on the right side and the Chili and Bassi uh, together with the first violin on the left side. And um, it's fascinating how Mahler's music get, for me personally, um, a transparency. And um, he mentioned one time in a letter, um, where he said, why don't the, the second violin don't play more? I have composed it in a way, in this way. That means if you sit in the audience, you will have a stereo effect. You will have the second, first one on the left side, second one on the right side. So if they have conversation to each other, um, it will come from two different uh, positions. 
which is very interesting also for especially for Mahler's music. And it changed after 1920, 1930. It came to that what we are used today. It has definitely to do with the um, with his Jewish background. I think, um, as we know, the anti-Semitism in in Vienna at that time was somehow growing a little bit, and in the 2030s, as we know, in this um, terrible time, there was no chance uh, that uh, Gustav Mahler's music can uh, can grow up, and we can be really thankful. Uh, to um, Leonard Bernstein and especially Raphael Kubelik, we should not forget this wonderful conductor who who did um, the who started the re the minor Renaissance even earlier than Leonard Bernstein did, and uh, and also the misunderstanding. That's the second thing: the misunderstanding of his uh, symphony. He had still the reputation. Um, to be trivial and uh, a little bit kind of uh, not not really high art. He uses too much folk music, as I described before. Um, that made uh, probably also some people not really love him. Still, for in the, especially in the German and Austrian um, culture society, Beethoven was a hero, and Schubert, Brahms, and. Uh, uh, Bruckner, they were those who are created this uh, symphony and Gustav Mahler, for them, went too far. Um, that's a very difficult question, but I would probably ask him um, to compose more music, especially for soloists. I would like to have a violin concerto uh, of Gustav Mahler, or a cello concerto, or a piano concerto, or even more an opera. But probably a more impersonal question I would ask him, uh, what is he thinking about the sense of life, what he's thinking about the death, what he's thinking about uh, uh, what happens after the death. Uh, that would be a very interesting conversation with him.